everyone and welcome to the Enemy Daily and thank you for joining me as we talk about episode 12 of the A Certain Scientific Railgun T animated series. An episode of tactics, smarts, showcasing the abilities of Shirai, Misaki and Kensai Sekihara. Well, at the end of it all, we have a very captivating episode that holds your attention despite the action that's brewing on the other side. So this video, I want to start off with Shirai's character, as once again, this episode finds ways of making me enjoy and appreciate her character even more. Showcasing off her tactful awareness, explaining her inner thoughts in devising a location for Kozaku in which she's trying to track down. She also learns mid-fight how to stop Kozaku's puppet. This allows her to kind of get that rough location based on logic, information and thought process of where Kozaku must be hiding. Because she figures out that the puppet is able to sense where she is by the camera in the necklace, disables it, and it automatically listens to sound and figures out where things are based on sound itself. So she uses the type of devices that interrupts that perception of sound to get past the um, puppet and when the puppet moves in this current state it means that Kozaku herself must be directly controlling it meaning that Kozaku has eyesight on Kuroko Shirai. So this I thought was great. It shows off uh, Shirai's character in a much more positive light and shows that she is very quick on her feet in thinking of strategies and plans and all round very tactful. I do often forget that Shirai is a level 4 Esper when watching the series, but throughout the past few episodes she really has helped establish herself as this strong, useful, reliable character in these types of situations, which I absolutely love. Whereas before, Misaka would often try to keep her friends away from these dangerous situations, but with situations like this and with the things have been playing out at the moment, Shirai has to go into the combat and the action giving us that display, which before now has been quite limited for Shirai's character, so honestly, this is a nice change of pace. Now, I say this, but at the same time, I'm excited to see what more we're going to have from her character, because we know there's going to be more from her, because we haven't had that resolution between her and Kozaku at this current state. So again, this character is only going to improve as we go forth, Unless it's simply just, I found you, bloop, you're in a jail cell now. Which would be very disappointing, but at the same time, I want to see a resolution that is positive for Shirai's character. Because this arc has been tremendous for her in terms of just displaying herself being herself. Next up, let's talk about Mitsuki Shogaho. She put up a great effort in front of a creepy old resourceful man, but still... Her face ended up looking very defeated by the end of the episode. This look of defeat kind of hints and tells me as the audience that she really did try everything that she could and there was a bit more meaning behind her efforts. Now, we hear a line from Misaki Shogaho in where she is a bit okay with the fact that only having Misaka as the only casualty or sacrifice and says that Misaka would be remembered for about a week or so. However, I personally don't 100% agree that Misaki Shokuho is okay with this outcome. After all, I do believe there's an underlining tone of respect and gratitude towards Misaka from Shokuho's character. Because it's saying to Misaka lending her DNA to the scientist when she was younger, making that mistake, thus creating the clones, thus leading to Shokuho making her first real friend in Dolly. Throughout this episode though, her involvement was very captivating, as we haven't seen a lot from Shokuho's character in terms of physical ability. But of course, we know that she's a brilliant strategist, and yet seeing how far she went to prevent the limiter release codes from uh, falling into Gensai's hands, you know, again, displays a great deal of effort, dedication, resolve, determination for her character, which in my opinion, makes her character even better overall. And again, alludes to the fact that she does have an ulterior motive and a different meaning behind her actions. Her use of gravitational panels was super creative. However, I would 
not be surprised if she had another trick or two up her sleeve towards the ending of the arc. Maybe she altered her own memories about the limiter codes, even making herself forget what they truly are. So when Gensai goes to use them, they're completely incorrect. Overall though, I think that she played a tremendous role in this episode, and I still think she has a part to play towards the climactic stage of the arc, so hopefully we see more of her in this arc and in future ones. Now then, let's go ahead and talk about Gensai Sekihara. This madman was incredible throughout this episode. I thought some of the animated shots though with him, where he was being a bit crazy and cuckoo kaka, was a bit poorly executed, but then again, it was meant to look weird and it could have been a purposeful choice from the animator, director, or whoever decides to do that. We'll move on from this though, because there's more pressing highlights from this character that I want to talk about. So, including the fact that he implemented Imagine Breaker being a factor into his plan, shows he's very smart, very resourceful, and knows a lot about something that not even us as fans know too much about from an anime perspective. But wait, was this he has more abilities, like Airshot, and um, an ability to make holes in walls and doors? Now, obviously we know he has the skill, multi-skill, which allows him to use uh, different abilities, but I didn't think that he was going to be like all for one um, from My Hero Academia. However, this character showed off a tremendous display of use of abilities, which kind of links back to the whole um, level upper arc, which I thought was great. Because we see kids inside these like sort of pods, um, obviously they're experimental, so the fact that he's done that, and there's a slight connection with the way things go in the level upper arc, I thought was a nice little um, caveat slash throwback. There was one ability that he used though that had me scratching my head a little bit because I wasn't quite sure if it was an ability or if it was part of his prosthetics with throughout his body. So if you know the answer to this, then please let me know in the comment section down below. That would be greatly appreciated. But there is a scene in where he steps onto an electric panel and the electric shocks were meant to go through his body and stop him dead in his tracks. However, he kept on walking through it and it never faced him. Is this prosthetic legs made out of plastic or something which meant it doesn't conduct electricity? Or was it a power that he had that allowed him to survive the electrical shocks? We don't know at this moment in time. Um, well, I don't, but you might. So if you can let me know, much appreciated. Despite all this though, I do believe that the constant air of creepiness and insanity that this character brought when he was approaching Misaka, um, not Misaka, Misaki Shokuho, sorry, was so enjoyable and added a lot of different layers and tone to the episode itself, holding my attention and making me want to see each and every second of the episode itself. Another key bit of information from this character is that he doesn't believe that Misaka has the quality to reach a complete slash stable level 6 state. But once the new powers develop to 53%, her mind will transform into a dif different dimensional entity. Once this stage occurs, exterior will be needed with its limiter removed. That's why he wants the codes, so that he can keep her in the world that they're currently in. Once getting to 100%, she'll apparently crumble with her power being overwhelming and either open up a door to the heavenly realm or fade like a white dwarfing star into a black one. Either way, the city will be done for, which is the only thing that seems kind of productive to his plan because it means that he would also die in the process. But another thing that this raises up and the flag that I do not like to see from an anime series, but it's kind of giving us this, is that we have to now work on a race. We can't let Misuka get to 53% because if she does, then her mind will no longer be her own and even if she comes back, there's no guarantee she'll be the same as we know her beforehand. And because obviously we've seen Index 3, we know that she is still the same as what she is prior to this current turn of events. So, yeah, I mean, that's a downside about watching it out of order. But at the same time, uh, I'm still excited to see how they're going to go and how they're going to resolve this. But it is a factor. We have to stop it before it gets to 53%. I'd love to see her at 100% and see what it looks like, but at the same time, um, you know, it makes logical sense for it to 
to be a race against the clock at this current stage. Overall, I love this character from an antagonist point of view. He clearly is devoted to his mad methods of science, so it also keeps giving off this vibe of the heavens opening, hinting at maybe gods appearing somewhere soon, or just angels in general. But at the same time, um, yeah, I want to see how they conclude this character. I don't really want to see him past this turn of events. I think this arc would be a great way to send his character off. But nevertheless, I'm still looking forward to seeing him more and more. Because he is creepy, he does bring an air of darkness and an air of creepiness to the episodes that we watch. So for that, I do have to say I appreciate the character being implemented. But I do think the favourite thing about this episode, in my personal opinion, is the way that it managed to grab and hurl my attention, despite showing this massive battle between Mitsuka, Toma and um, Gana developing outside, but they kept the episode to a very information-focused episode. And that, again, doesn't seem like it's going to be that exciting when comparing it to a massive battle between a developing character into a level 6 versus um, Toma and another level 5. When comparing the two together, you always go for the battle. But this was an information-filled episode that held my attention, got me invested, and kept me entertained from start to finish. So for that aspect of the episode, I have to say the writing was awesome. So I think that was my favourite thing about the episode itself, because although I'm hyped to see the climactic stage of the fight, which I thought was coming in this episode, I still appreciate this information or based one that helped develop and add to the characters we currently have. With Misaka now transforming, already looking awesome in design and going to the next stage, Gensai having the codes, this is pressure on our protagonist. Will they be able to win before she gets to 100% or even 53%? Misaka won't come away from this battle unharmed though, I do believe. I feel like there has to be some form of trauma or repercussions to stay with her long term after all is said and done, thanks to this massive amount of power that's being pumped into her. So I am very intrigued to see what awaits us in the closing stages of this arc. Let me know your thoughts on this season or on this arc in the comments down below, what you thought of the video and any of the points that I raised. Hopefully you enjoyed this, if you have hit that like button, but let's keep going until we get to the ending of the series. Overall, great animation, really good story writing, enjoyable episode, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Aligato, madane, goodbye.